The callback Leibler divergence is a distance measure between distributions which is widely used in information theory and particularly for machine learning. The equations come in two forms, one for discrete probability distributions and one for continuous distributions. On the surface, however, it's not exactly clear why the KL divergence is so useful or even how the summation or integral measures the distance between distributions in any way. To explain why the KL divergence is a very natural idea, let's back off and consider what it is we're trying to achieve. What we're trying to do is measure the distance between probability distributions. Let's first give an example of a probability distribution. Let's imagine that we have a fair coin which is equally likely to be on heads or tails. This means that the probability of heads is 0.5 and the probability of tails is also 0.5. Let's imagine that we also have a bias coin where the probability of heads is set at p and the probability of tails at q. Can we say anything about how similar the distributions are to each other? There isn't a trivial answer to this question. We might be able to make general statements about which examples are closer. For example, if p is 0.55, then coin 2 would clearly be much closer to the fair coin than if p was 0.95. Why? Well, the results we'd see with 0.55 would be quite similar to the fair coin, and it would be very easy to confuse them. However, if p was 0.95, then differentiating between the two coins would be quite simple and could be done in merely a few coin flips. Determining the difference between two extreme examples might be easy. But can we make any quantitative statements about how different they are, and is it possible to put a numeric value on the distance? Previously, we reasoned that a natural way to think about the distance between distributions was to look at how easy it was to confuse them. A basic way of measuring this might be by seeing if the distributions assign similar probabilities to the same sequences. As if they assign similar probabilities to similar sequences, it implies that the distributions aren't too different. Let's then propose an algorithm. First, we generate observations using coin 1. We then calculate the probability of coin 2 generating the observations. After that, we can compare this probability to the probability of the true coin generating the results. If the output probabilities are similar, then the coins might be similar. But if the likelihood is significantly smaller for the second coin, then the coins might be very different. A natural thing to calculate would then be this ratio here, which compares the likelihood of the observations for each coin. Let's go over an example of the proposed method. Assume that we have a coin with probability p1 for heads and p2 for tails. We then flip the coin n times and record the observations. We then work out the probability of coin 1 generating the sequence. Working this probability out is quite simple. Whenever we see heads, we just multiply by p1, and whenever we see tails, we multiply by p2. Let's now introduce coin 2, which has probabilities q1 and q2 instead. Working out the probability of coin 2 generating the data is done identically, where we just multiply by q1 for each heads and q2 for each tails. These two expressions can then be simplified by realizing it's the product of the probability of each outcome raised to the power of the number of occurrences. For the first coin, this is p1 to the power of the number of heads multiplied by p2 to the power of the number of tails. We then want to find the ratio of probabilities, so we simply divide the first likelihood by the second one. Although these calculations may seem unrelated to the KL divergence, believe it or not, under the hood, the KL divergence measures the exact same thing. To see how, Let's normalize for sample size by raising it to the power of 1 over the number of samples, then take the log of this expression. We'll then turn on the log rule autopilot and bring down exponents, turn multiplications and divisions into additions and subtractions, again drop down the powers, which gets us to this stage. Note that if observations are generated by coin 1, then as the number of observations grow to infinity, we expect the proportion of heads to tend to p1 and the proportion of tails to tend to p2. This allows us to say that in the limit, nh over n is p1, and nt over n is p2. After some final logarithmic manipulation, we then arrive at our final expression. Remember what this expression represents, the normalized log probability of the true likelihood divided by the likelihood of the second distribution. All we did was simplify this initial expression for the coin example with basic log rules, and we got to this equation. If we look at the discrete Kale divergence equation again, we notice that the two equations are equivalent. Furthermore, Every step of the proof holds true when there are more than two classes, and in fact the KL divergence is a general form of the normalized log ratio when there are multiple classes. This then gives us intuition for what the KL divergence is, a natural measurement of distance between probability distributions motivated by looking at how likely the second distribution would be able to generate samples from the first distribution. Since a lot of deep learning is all about modeling true underlying distributions, the KL divergence becomes a very useful measure. In fact, the cross entropy loss is equivalent to the KL loss, so by minimizing cross entropy, we're minimizing the distance between distributions. That's everything for today's video. 
Hopefully you now understand what the KL divergence is and have better intuition for why it's used. To find out more about the KL divergence and general fundamental machine learning theory, make sure to subscribe to the channel for updates on future videos.